My name is Jim Turk. I'm the Executive Director of the Canadian Association of University Teachers. I'm joined by Wayne Peters, the President of CET, and Robert Johnson, one of our staff people who's been doing a lot of work on the campaign we're about to announce. In our view, science in Canada is at a tipping point. Uh, from the muzzling of scientists to the underfunding of basic research at our universities and colleges, the federal government is making dumb choices uh, that will have serious consequences for all Canadians. Today, the Canadian Association of University Teachers is announcing the launch of a national campaign, which we're calling Get Science Right, to highlight the negative impact of the federal government's approach to science and to propose new directions and to encourage Canadians to take action to ensure that Canada does not become a scientific backwater. Well, the Harper government um, has been announcing that it's spending more on research and science than its predecessors. If that's the case, it's been spending it very badly. Um, they seem to have no real understanding of the importance of basic research. That's research that's driven by researchers and scientists' judgment and, and knowledge about what will likely be productive avenues to pursue without any ability to, to forecast where this will lead. Uh, basic science has really proven to be the foundation for uh, our advancement in knowledge, but also for applied work uh, for all other things that provide benefit to Canadians. I mean, when one thinks of it, x-rays, uh, lasers, GPSs, MRIs, uh, radios, electric motors, uh, computers, uh, the World Wide Web, ATMs, if you went to a bank machine, all those things came about through knowledge that we acquired through basic research. And yet we have a government that is really uh, cutting back on funding for that. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to understand that politicians want to put money into things where they can know where it's going to lead. But in science, you just don't know where things are going to lead. Good science, you pursue it, you make your best judgments, you have experts uh, make the hard decisions of where the money should go, and our benefit comes from that. Uh, one of the people who's spoken really eloquently about this is a man named Paul Berg, uh, who uh, as a Nobel laureate from Stanford University, um, and his fundamental studies of the biochemistry of nucleic acids in the 1970s laid the basis for the splicing of DNA to make um, hybrid molecules and really helps under, underlay much of the biotech industry. And in some interviews that, that Paul did a few years ago, you know, he, he spoke quite frankly that if I had had to pass through a commercial screen, if I had had to be able to explain where my research was going to lead, I wouldn't have gotten a dime. And yet now it helps underlay a, a multi-trillion dollar biotech industry. Um, basic research is really the foundation that helps make applied research possible. Now in Canada, most of the funding for basic research is done through our three federal granting councils. Social Science and Humanities Research Council, the Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council, and the Canadian Institutes for Health Research. But if you look at the handout that, that we gave you, there's a PowerPoint handout, what we see is that the funding for the granting councils in real dollar terms, rather than increasing as it badly needs to do, has been decreasing. Over the last seven years, the funding in real dollar terms for the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council has dropped by 10.1%. For the Natural Science and Engineering Research Council, the funding has dropped by 6.4%. And for the Canadian Institutes for Health Research, the funding has dropped by 7.5%. Um, so the pie is getting smaller. At the same time, the federal government is stacking the granting council governing boards. Uh, the number of scientists and active researchers on it are, are dropping, uh, and political appointees are, are putting on, and the granting councils are developing policies that are taking this shrinking pie of funding and diverting even some of that, or a significant portion of that, away from uh, basic research. If you look at another slide, that uh, it's slide uh, number uh, uh, 20 on the uh, PowerPoint in your kit, uh, NSERC, the National, uh, Natural Science and Engineering Research Council, uh, has how the, the change over the last uh, four, three years uh, in funding for uh, scholarships, they call it uh, people research talent, it's for scholarships and bursaries, 
how that's changed, how the funding for basic research has changed, and how the funding for partnerships with industry. The funding for students has dropped by 22.2%. The funding for basic research has dropped by 15.9%, and yet they've increased the funding for partnerships with industry by 22%. So the priorities, even within the Grandy Councils, given the changing character of their governing bodies and the pressure from the federal government, are, are making even their limited funds even more limited for basic research. Uh, we uh, we uh, have a number of researchers and scientists in the room, uh, who I'll introduce in a, in a moment, uh, feel the consequences of this. When you look at the success rate, each of the granting Councils has sort of main um, uh, competitions for, for their, their funding. And if, uh, for the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council, the success rate now, uh, the, of all the applications that are made, they deem two-thirds of them worthy of being funded, should be funded, and they're only able to fund 27% now. Uh, for the Natural Science and Engineering Discovery Grants, which are funding people, they're smaller grants, but given to more people, the, uh, uh, over the last five years, the uh, success rate has dropped, uh, what they've been able to fund has dropped from 73% to 62%. In the health sciences, what our government talks about is so important, the success rate now um, is 9%. 91% of the applicants cannot be funded. Uh, so this is, this is really having chilling consequences um, for uh, scientists and researchers, uh, for young uh, ac uh, academics coming out, for people in mid-career who are wanting to keep their labs going, um, and it's, it's, having, uh, it's really affecting our ability to advance knowledge, to teach students, and to develop the next generation of researchers and scientists. And one of the results is a lot are leaving Canada uh, to uh, get jobs at American universities where there's uh, more funding uh, and a better appreciation of the importance of, of this kind of research. So in this campaign, we're going to talk about solutions. Uh, it requires increased funding for the granting councils. It requires making the granting councils more arm's length from government, so they're not agents of political decisions, but they're actually scientific bodies that advise and decide on what science and research should be funded. Um, we're also pressing for stopping the muzzling of scientists. I mean, this is a government that's not, not only muzzling government scientists, but as you have read in the media recently, they've now extended that to academic scientists who work with, uh, with uh, government scientists. And I just read a story, uh, uh, actually it was a blog that, Katie, uh, that Kelly Crow had, uh, where she was interviewing a student who had been a MA student with one of the top scientists in the country uh, that was looking at how, you, you remember when, when we're in flu season, they talk, well, there's so many deaths due to flu, uh, and we all think that's based on something. It's all based on computer models and various assumptions, and so she was doing work to try to look at actual deaths related and how it, and did this as an MA thesis, and now working for the federal government, and when Kelly went to interview her, she was told, she to, she was told by, by the, uh, the student, that, uh, former student, that she can't talk to them, and she now works for the federal government, and it requires permission, and the permission was denied. So she can't even talk about work she did before she went to work for the federal government. So all that kind of stuff has to stop. And we're also calling for the creation of a nonpartisan a parliamentary science officer who's not reporting to a minister but reports to parliament and provides advice. How we're going to try to do this is we're going to work really hard to help make the public aware of what's happening and what the consequences are. We've created a dedicated website. It's online now. It's getscienceright.ca. I encourage you to uh, go to that site. It has an interactive map of Canada, for example, with the identification of uh, many, many projects that have been shut down or seriously harmed because of the uh, drop-off in funding. It has a number of YouTube videos of, of some eminent scientists and researchers across the country, some in this room, uh, talking uh, about what this means. We're going to have email and petition tools. We're going to be organizing town hall meetings across Canada and every major community in the country to provide an opportunity for researchers and scientists to talk with the public in their own communities about what this means and, and why we have to bring about changes. We're going to have a series of profiles of each of the granting councils to shine a bright light on what they're doing and why it's harmful. Um, and we're going to work hard to build uh, stronger communications links amongst researchers and scientists so that it will be easy to mobilize their voices to be heard. They're the ones who know what these consequences are. Um, we've launched this campaign because our 68,000 members are gravely concerned about what's happening, uh, gravely concerned about the actions of the federal government that are really harming 
uh, scientific and research in this country and therefore harming Canadians. It's time, in our view, that the government of Canada stops making dumb choices, starts making the right ones as a country uh, for our future and for the future of humanity, we need to get science right, and we need to do that now. Um, I'm pleased to uh, answer any questions any of the journalists may have, and then I would just want to call your attention, we'll, we'll conclude the press conference, I'll draw your attention to some of the researchers and scientists in the room if you'd like to talk with them just to get an a individual example or a sense of uh, these kinds of concerns that I've been talking about generally.